So this is, I'm obviously, I'm pretty excited about this talk. Um, and uh, I worked a lot with Grant, and by working a lot with Grant on this stuff, I means I sort of play around with Docker. Um, I know enough to be, to be dangerous. And then I'll say to Grant things like, you know, it would be really nice if we could have an FME server that looked at the queue, and based on the number of things in the queue, we would spin up a new EC2 machine, and then on that EC2 machine, launch engines, and then when they were all done the work, we could, we could collapse things. That's pretty accurate, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty yeah. Much. And then Grant goes away, and, uh, and uh, we, you know, we brainstorm a little bit. Grant's doing all the heavy lifting and all the hard work, so, so let's, like, we need to be very clear about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just, I, I get to play with it, and then we just go, we go back and forth. So, so, the, so clearly when we talk about cloud right now, um, and there's probably some cloud guys here. Yeah, anyway. Um, when we talk about cloud, right now what we do with cloud is we, we, um, we use the cloud in the sense that we can launch an instance, but the true dream of the cloud is this whole idea of elasticity, being able to you know, scale up these, these resources that are really cheap to use them for the job. And then when the task is done, um, just collapse right back down, right? I mean, ultimately it would be just awesome if you just bought FME Compute, sort of like the way you buy electricity. Um, and when you were doing things, you, were, you, you got a bill. And when you weren't, you didn't, right? Because right now, even in FME Cloud, you're paying for the capacity. You fire up a machine, it sits there. Whether you use it or not, you're paying for the capacity to, to do work, right? So you don't have to buy the hardware. You don't ha there's a lot of things you don't have to do. The machines are really cheap. As the hard underlying hardware is improved, you get it. But where we want to get to is this whole notion of, you know, this elastic future of FME where you pay for what you use. Um, yeah. And so Docker is, um, I ran into Docker about, I think, three or four years ago at, Do at uh, Google I.O., and I went to the talk only because I didn't understand the word Docker. I didn't know, I thought it was a pair of pants. And so, <laughs> and so uh, I went and it took me about 30 minutes at that talk and then the light bulb went on. And then I'm like, okay, this is big. This is a game changer. Um, and now it's safe. Um, in addition to using Amazon, um, Docker has changed the way we, we do things, the way we build FME the way we, um, we do everything. I'm running um, FME on my Mac, inside Docker, and the future of FME server for sure, and the cloud is Docker. So, so we'll talk a little bit about what we've done. So here's some of the things. We have a little demo to, la to, to launch here, um, right off the bat, because we're gonna check in as we go. And if I left the demo to the end, we wouldn't have any time to see any elasticity, and so it would be kind of a boring talk. So there you go. And then we're going to talk about what is Docker. You know, people say, oh, Docker is just a new uh, virtualization. Oh, it's so much more than just a new virtualization. Um, and we'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about um, um, Docker and FME Server, all the benefits, you know, all the things it solves with FME Server. Um, and then last but not least, we'll talk a little bit about Docker and, um, and FME, FME Cloud. So, yeah. And if you have any questions anytime, just, uh, yeah, let, let us know. So what we're going to do is we're going to launch about 1.5 days worth of processing, and, um, and we're going to come back to it. So what I have is, I'll go over here. Okay. Yeah, I guess I've got to escape this. Maybe we'll go like this. Ah, no. Well, I'll use another browser. Everybody's favorite browser. So there we go. So there we go. I have a machine, one machine running right now, and it has FME server on it with no engine. So it has, it has a database, it has a web layer, it has core, and then there's this other funny thing. What's this monitor thing? So this is a, another container that's running a Docker yep. container that has a script inside, and it's just looking at the FME server core. And it's seeing, uh, it's using the REST API and it's saying, are there any jobs, there anything in the queue, anything needs to be run? And, uh, and once there is something to run, then it starts firing up instances and yep. launching engine containers. Yeah, and you wrote that in Python? Yeah, it's yep. running in Python. So we've got a Python script that basically uses, does that. And then we have this visualization container, which is what we're looking at right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to launch a, um, a job. Okay. Oh, over here. Sorry. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah. Admin, admin, you gotta love that. 
Okay, and I have this parent workspace I'm going to run, and I'm going to run um, 100 jobs. Not ah, 200 jobs, what the heck. Each job takes 10 minutes, so, okay, and I'm going to say uh, run. And of course, right now the job's sitting in the queue because there's not even any engines to, to, to even run the, this one that's going to launch the 200 jobs, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So now back over to here, and um, yeah. So while that's running, we're going to talk about what is Docker, okay? So it's got a really cool logo, um, and the logo has containers on top of it. And so it's this new way of um, putting applications into a container. So since people say, oh, Docker is better virtualization, that's one thing. So if you think about a machine, a virtual machine, um, when you have a virtual machine on a host, every virtual machine has a copy of the operating <coughs> system. Okay, so that's pretty heavy. And when the thing's fired up, you, you have to specify all the resources. When the virtual machine fires up, it takes all those resources, even if it's doing nothing. So um, you're not going to run too many of these on a, on a physical box. Okay. So if you look at Docker, um, um, there is no guest OS. So on Linux, it's running Linux. On Mac, it's running Linux through a virtualization layer called XHive, but that's just a detail. Something else to notice is that it, they share the bins and the libs. So application A, there's two copies. The first one, of course, has to launch the bins and the lib for application A, but the second one just uses those. So really, the, the cost of the container is the size of the thing in the container. Okay? And we think about engines, again, if we had four engines on the machine, the first one's going to launch all the bins and the libs, but the next ones on that machine are just going to use those bins and libs, so the next ones are, are a lot cheaper than the first one. So you can see the cost of running um, these Docker containers are much lighter than, than a virtual machine. Okay, so this is, um, yeah. I'll just add to that. Perfect. Um, when you, each, each, say you have, say you have app B on that is an FME engine, so you have four of these FME engines, and like Don says, you don't actually have four like straight copies. So a container uh, or the engine has everything it needs for the engine in that container and it's contained and it can't get out of that and everything it needs is inside. And when you make another one of those, it's actually underneath, it's sharing the same file so you're not duplicating it again, but that, that process is still contained in, in its own separate container and it can't, if it starts messing with the files inside of it, then it starts making copies of those things and the other one's not affected. So even though they're sharing, um, one isn't gonna mess up the other. Yeah. So it's really, really amazing. So what does this mean? So if we look at bare metal, you know, um, how long does it take to allocate a machine? Um, eight to 24 hours, well, that's if you can just run down the street by your own machine, right? In many organizations, that's, that can be months, we know, right, to deploy a new FME server. You gotta go through procurement, you gotta buy all the hardware, you gotta do stuff. Um, a virtual, a cloud machine, um, an FME cloud, when you go launch a new machine, it's, it's five to 10 minutes, and that's just what it takes to launch that entire new host um, on a physical machine. A container, uh, they say five to 15 seconds, but we're seeing, um, we're seeing the first engine's gonna say to take five seconds. Subsequent engines are just like <coughs> launching engines, killing engines, it's yeah. just lickety split. Even in this demo where once there's a, 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 another machine provisioned, another EC2 instance, but there's no engine containers running, and I go to run a job in the web UI, you barely see it queued. Like yeah. the engine spins up very quickly, like within a second or two, and yeah. the job's running. Like it yeah. just brings up a new container, runs the job, and the container goes away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's um, so we'll go through another couple slides and we'll check back there. So they also they also do some interesting things. They also virtualize the network. So this is really interesting. I on my on my Docker for Mac, I have um, FME running as a bunch of different containers. I've defined a bunch of different networks, and I can define exactly what a what network, what other containers my container can see. So let's say I have engine, and I don't want the engine to see my web layer then my, the, there's just no, there's no, my virtual networks it lays down, there's no path from that engine to um, my web layer. Whereas regular FME server, um, hey, it has whole run of the whole machine. Um, we have this great call called at system. You can do whatever you want, right? R, M, slash. And uh, if you have permission, you know, it's, it's, well, you know, you're gonna bring your FME server and a lot of other stuff down, right? But inside Docker, RM slash will destroy that container. So think of, you know, it's rattling around inside a truck. That's why containers are such a good metaphor. Just think of those truck containers that are going down the road. 
You've got an FME engine inside there. The worst thing that FME engine is going to do is trash whatever's inside that, inside that container, but it's not going to have access outside that container other than finely um, like firewall rules that you, that, that, that you define. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really just the way you can define how your, how your container is going to interact with each other, and they only need to see the things they need to see and nothing else. Yeah, that's right. And so some of the benefits, portability. Um, if the operating system supports Docker, then it's just going to run. And we've, FME server and Docker is just going to run. And we've, when, we've test, when we've tested that, we just, you know, we went to every cloud instance we could find that had Docker. We got any Linux box that had Docker. And we just spun it up and it just worked. Um, isolation, this is huge. Anybody ever hear of DLL hell? <laughs> yeah, how about Java library hell? All that goes away because the application, whatever's running in the container, is completely contained. It doesn't <coughs> need to borrow libs, <coughs> other versions of libs, other versions of Java libraries, class libraries from, from anything else. So all that, all that goes away. It's also isolated from the entire, um, from the OS. It doesn't have access to your disk unless you specify the exact directory that it's going to basically have read-write access to. And in fact, um, FME Server now, um, it can read and write right into where you, you know, your repository where you put your workspaces. The engines can read and write in there, and, um, but not in Docker because they only have read access. So that means when, it, when a workspace is running, it can read the workspaces, but it's not going to be able to write, write junk in there. So, so what we found is when you start putting things in Docker, you find out all these badly behaved workspaces that are writing stuff over hell's half acre. Yeah, so I wasn't sure if I was supposed to say that or not. So that was a, so yeah, so security. Yeah, yeah. again, again, it's just every, every single process is, um, is isolated in its own container. They can't mess with each other. Um, you basically just open up only the bits that, that you know it needs, right? So it only needs to talk to this container. Uh, it's not gonna be able to talk to everything else. It only needs access to these files. That's all you're gonna give it. Um, yeah, so it just makes everything much more secure, much more easily. Yeah, yeah. And they also, you know, when you're running stuff in production, you can sign the containers um, so that you know the container you're actually running is one that was, has gone, it's real, really clever because you can have a whole production process where test puts a signature on and then it goes to, um, t you know, um, staging puts a test on and by the time it goes to production, you know that this actual container has actually gone through all those, all those, all those steps. So it's pretty, uh, yeah, resources. Um, you get a high resource density. So what that means is you can run, I think maybe my next slide, but you can run many more um, containers on a machine than you can, um, you can um, virtual machines. Uh, you can also, when you launch a container, you can tell it how much of the CPU it's actually gonna get. Whereas with engine right now in FME server, you know, let's say you have your engines going crazy, well they can starve, they can starve the map layer, the web layer out of resources, right? And you've probably seen that. Um, you have your wrist pounding a machine, and then all of a sudden your web gets slow, right? Because the web is starved for CPU resources. With Docker, you can, you can specify, always make sure that this certain amount of resources is for my web layer, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, starting is scaling. Um, yeah, so how many virtual machines can you run on a physical machine? 10, like a maybe, on a really big, big machine? Um, yeah, so anyway, I did some research, and there's lots of arg doc articles talking about how many of these. Um, it, it's measured in 10. Some people said you could get 15, okay? But virtual machines, um, 20 times. I mean, I've had 50 containers running on my laptop, and I haven't even, haven't even noticed, you know? Sometimes, you know, you get crazy, and so... And, um, and the nice thing is, is they take the resources as they need them. When you launch a container, you know, you specify the upper bound of, of memory, but it's not taking that at launch time. It's, it's, it's basically will take it as it needs it and leave the rest for. So they play more nicely together. Yeah. Yeah, so who's using Docker? So these are, this is, you know, some big, big companies are using Docker. Um, Netflix, um, who is a very early um, AWS um, company that embraced an AWS and really um, doesn't mean, we all know Netflix and what they, their stack must be. They're going crazy now on Docker because they see they can provide all that functionality at an order of magnitude um, 
lower price and you know you can spin these things up because a because a container can be restarted in under a second you can just throw them away a virtual machine that takes 10 minutes you're not going to throw it away you tend to keep them around and um, and literally if you've got a container going you throw it away restart it and um, yeah yeah so yeah so docker will change how we deploy fme it already is we have docker for mac um, i that's all i run um, we have Docker for Windows, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. And um, with FME Server, where we're going is Windows Server 2016 is, is, has Docker in it, and we're going to, that'll be the future deployment um, of FME Server, say, 2019, I'm going to guess there. But, um, yeah. yeah. It really just makes it easier. It's like yeah. you, can, you can run an FME Server on your Mac or on your Windows laptop yeah. or on yeah. your yeah. on your. Linux AWS yeah. instance, yeah. and it's yeah. it's the same commands on each. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's more secure for, from a security standpoint for an organization. The the uh, the server can't go crazy. It can't get access to network resources. It can't get access to disk. You can really control how much it um, it has, um, and it's more reliable. You don't have to worry about oh I installed this other app. Oh, it's just nothing's worse than. Oh, our FME server was running fine, and then and then I installed this other application over here, and now it doesn't work, right? It's like, oh man, or vice versa. Oh, this thing over here was running great until I installed FME server. Now it doesn't work. It's like, oh, right. So yeah, so the number of um, different um, versions of FME server. There's Docker for Mac, and um, I run it on. It's running on my Mac right now, and uh, it's ru it's running Linux, a Linux version. So, but I can't tell. It's not um, a native Linux box. It's, and um, I don't use VMware anymore. Well, that's not true. I use <laughs> VMware in one case, and that's because our current financial system, I, ha I can only access it if I fire up a Windows XP virtual machine. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Everybody's forgotten about Windows XP, so it's really secure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, but that's going away because we're replacing that system and it'll be web-based. But that's the only reason I use uh, VMware now. And, and before that, I used to have run VMware all the time because I want to run um, FME server. I play with everything we build, and um, so I needed FME server. So that's the FME. Oh, yeah, so demo. So there it is, um, Firefox here. Okay, I go here, and then this thing called local server, and there it is. See, that's pretty fast. And then everybody knows my password. And um, I'm in, right? So this is FME server running on the Mac. And it's a full-blown FME server. I can do whatever I want. Um, and, it's uh, very easy to deploy. Yeah, I just one command, yeah. Mm -hmm. Docker compose up minus D, and that's it. Yeah, it just pulls our, our compose file we already have defined. It, it, it has all of our containers that we've built uh, for FME server already defined and how they're going to talk to each other and what they're going to need. It's yeah. already pre-done. You just grab that thing. Yeah. Um, if there's any... any there's a couple of parameters in there you might want to change, but you don't have to. And then yep. you just do one command. You have your FME server running. After, maybe you want to do this to just test something out really quickly. Maybe you don't have access to your FME server at that point. Just have it on your machine. When you're done, you just throw it away. Yeah. And, yep. and how many containers do we have for? Yeah, so there's, there's four containers in our, yeah. uh, in our FME server yeah. deployment. So we have yeah. our data, a container for the database, a container for the web layer, the Tomcat, yeah. uh, and then one for the FME server core, and then for the engine. Uh, yeah. that runs and the core is going to be exploded into a whole bunch of containers. We're going to have schedule container. We're going to have web layer container. We're going to have no yeah, the, the queue containers. And they'll all be distributed um, so that we won't have active, 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 passive anymore. If you want a fault tolerant FME server, launch on three machines. And you can kill any one machine at any time, and you won't even know. And the engines will automatically redeploy on the machines you have. Put in a new piece of hardware, have it join the... the um, the swarm and it'll automatically redeploy. So that's where we, we want to get to. So yeah. So that's Docker for Mac, um, and then there's Docker for Windows. Have you used Docker for Windows? Yes, I have it on my laptop. And okay. It works exactly the same way. Yeah. So it's running. Yeah. You can run an FME server. Exact same commands. Yeah. Uh, as on and Mac. it's running Linux as well. Yeah. It's yeah. running a, a Linux uh, Hyper-V virtual machine. On yeah. On Windows. Yeah. So. Yeah. But what's really exciting is this, Docker Server 2016. Yeah. I even put builds in. I was so excited. So there we go. I don't yeah, know so, why I did so that. Th so this is but, running yeah. running uh, Windows containers on, on Windows Server 2016. Yeah. So on Docker for Windows and our Linux containers, you could run Linux containers, but this is running actual native Windows containers on Windows. Yeah. Um, so eventually we'll have an FME server deployment that runs in this. That's right. We don't have it That's quite right. Yet. So now we'll be able to have um, Windows FME server 
and Linux and FME server. And ultimately, you would be able to have, now Microsoft doesn't have this yet, but the ability to run Linux containers and Windows containers on the same machine. Um, so you can imagine and that would having, be really exciting. You could imagine having your, your web layer be Linux yep. uh, and your, your engines be Windows because you want more formats yep. that are supported yep. on Windows. Yep. And of course, the FME server core and all this stuff will have no idea what is inside the container because we're just going to talk to the container interface. And so we're going to strive to not expose what type of engine is underneath. Um, so that, you know, and then build everything at a generic level. So, yeah. Um, the type of engine, like whether it's a window or a Linux engine. Yeah, yeah, just to try to isolate it. But, yeah, so this is really exciting. And this shows that Microsoft's very serious about this. Microsoft is spending a fortune to try and embrace this whole idea of containerization. It's an entirely new way to deploy um, um, software. So, yeah, so if we look at FME Server today, um, we're going to go back to that thing in a minute here. Let's, anyway, so um, I'm getting excited. So FME Server today, that's what it is, right? It's capacity defined by engine licenses. And uh, yeah, FME Server future. What we want is we want to be able to easily launch these other machines that are purely just engines. Okay, so that's one. Um, of course, FME Server is going to explode into many, many containers. But that's kind of the idea. Wouldn't it be nice if we had this bursting ability? Because we all have, sometimes we have, let's say we have four engines. And then sometimes, maybe once a quarter, or maybe we have a special project that lasts for 12 weeks, and we need a lot of engines. And um, you know, none of us wants to call up Safe and say, "Yeah, I want to buy 12 more engines just because, you know, I, I need them for 12 weeks." And so usually we talk to you and we come up with we we see which you know you know look the finger, and then we say, "How does that sound?" You go, "No, nah, I don't like the sound of that." Okay, how does this sound? You go, yeah, okay, and then so, and so then we give you a temporary license, and then everybody goes away happy, but not as happy as we could be if the burst licensing was always there, because you have to call us and go through procurement. So yeah, so that's the idea there. So and then we, we'd want it to go back down. So let's go check our demo. So let's see what's going on here. Let's hope that it's working. <laughs> oh, look at that! So now we have how many machines do we have? Yeah, we have all these. So there's our original guy there. And now we've launched one, two, three, four, five, six um, different um, EC2 machines. And if I go to... Each one's running four engines. That's what those four boxes are. Four yeah. Containers. And if I go engine down engines. to the um, engine list, you'll see that this engine, I have 9,999 match engines, so I should be pretty good. <laughs> and, um, I hope we don't go over that. Yeah, I hope we don't go over that. But I have, um, right now, I have uh, 20, 20 that are running. And um, yeah, so, yeah, so that's the thing there. So we'll go back here. So, so you can see it's, and there's still tons of things in the queue. Yep. What's the licensing scheme? What's the what? Licensing scheme. Oh, um, right now we don't have a licensing scheme. So it'd be talk, talk <laughs> with us. Yeah, for that, yeah, yeah. And that's, what, that's a, yeah, that's a great question. Because that's why we would like to get into this thing where you just buy, like, CPU time or, or run time. And then, because really, we don't care how many engines you have, right? Right? That's, you know, and really, when you buy electricity, you don't like rent a generator running or a hydroelectric dam, right? You just kind of, you just buy what you use, right? And then you try to use less and all these good stuff. So, yeah, so, so how is this going to impact cloud where well, we're going to have new cloud deployments? Um, right now, okay, right now we have um, Amazon EC2. Um, we did that one because it was the biggest. And now we're in the process of re-architecting how cloud is going to be deployed as containers, and then we'll tackle Azure probably first. And then the other ones will come very, very quickly. And then once we got the whole stack completely working, then we'll replace AWS. AWS is working fine, so we probably will leave it alone until we've got the wrinkles out of everything else before we decide to replace that one. Right. So, yep. So FME Cloud today looks like this. And ultimately, we would like it to, um, you know, again, be able to <coughs> allocate engines as, as the workload increases. So, yeah. So, and ultimately, you know, that would be the goal, like, like Amazon. How much, you know, this whole idea, to you, it would be serverless. You would just pay for your use. And um, we would look after the infrastructure underneath. And um, so that's, you know, that's where we, we want to we wanna get to. So, yeah, because we also have this problem, right? We talked about, and this is something else that Docker will enable us to do. 
is FME likes the engines in particular like to be close to the data. So if you have some data in Azure and you have other data on premise and you have other data in Amazon Web Services, really what you want is you want your engine that's accessing the Azure stack to be in Azure, okay? And then you want the engines that are in Amazon to be in Amazon. And then you want the, da the engines that are in premise to be in premise. And so that's where with Docker we'll be able, we'll be able to do, okay? Because you want your engine actually in the same data center as the data because the communication bandwidth is much better. Amazon pays for downloading out of their thing. It's free to get it in, but if you, you know, so, so that's ultimately where we wanna, we wanna get to. So let's check on our demo. And, um, and so let's see how many we got going here. And um, yeah, three, six, seven. So we got seven now, so that's 28 engines. And it just keeps going, um, yeah. And I think we're, we're pretty good. Yeah, so this sort of a quick summary on what we, we saw there. We have this monitor that Grant wrote. Well, this works, Grant's. Yeah, and so the, the monitor script, again, it's looking at the, the queue, seeing if jobs are coming in, or if there's jobs in the queue, I mean, so things that need to be run that aren't being run. And if it sees things that are there, then it'll launch a new machine. Once the machine's up, it'll just, it just scales the containers, says, hey, I want more um, Docker engine containers. And then Docker says, okay, well, where do I have some free space, oh, this new machine's here, puts the containers there, they connect to the core, run the jobs. Once the queue's empty and all the jobs are done running, then it can look at, uh, now we have all these servers running and we're using AWS, so when it's getting close to the hour and there's no, yeah. no containers running on there, just shut that machine down, shut that machine down, it'll shrink back down yeah. to, to what yeah. it needs. Yeah. So you kill the containers right away, yeah, the containers. But, he, but he leaves the machines up because with AWS, once you launch a machine, you gotta pay for the hour, so we might as well leave it up until we're close to the hour in case another job comes around, so that's kind of the, yeah, and basically that's, that's what goes on. And then this is a great, and then, yeah. So, wow, we're pretty good time. <laughs> that always amazes me how that happens. Yeah, so hopefully this gave you some idea. Obviously at a hugely high, high level of, of where we're going with, uh, with Docker technology, why we're so excited about tech, Docker technology, and why it um, is a game changer for, you know, it's already changing how we build FME. Um, now we have a daily test of FME server where we grab the last healthy engine, so no, you know, whereas before, you know, it was much more, uh, it was a slower process, I guess I'm gonna say. And um, yeah, and from a security standpoint, sec security is big. Now FME server and all its components clearly are locked inside these containers. They can only access on the host machine um, what, you, what we de you define for them. And, um, and also you can much better handle CPU resources, network resources and everything. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a total game changer. And the future of FME Cloud is, um, <coughs> is based on Docker Container. Claude and Pascal are, uh, are busy working on that. The server team also is um, using Docker. So yeah, so any? Yeah, just, uh, the, all this Docker stuff, if you wanna try running FME Server on Docker yourself, we have that yeah. available. We have a, a public <laughs> Docker repo. And, yeah. uh, called yeah. Docker Hub, and you can find our FME service things there. And I think there's a blog post and a knowledge yeah. base article yeah. to get started. Um, yeah, yeah. We, if you want the Python, you can have it. It's, um, it's not production quality, so it's totally one of those unsupported things. But if you just want to see what we've done, um, and you can have that too, so yeah, yeah. Is the tech preview supported right now? Is it, yeah, that's a great, we want to have it supported by 2017.1, so yeah. Yeah, so what we've done is we have a, a massive test suite that we run on server, and how, are, how yeah. close are we? Yeah, it's now running nightly, just, okay, the uh, whole just thing? recently. But yeah, it's running all, all okay. our tests, all our squish tests yeah. are, are being yeah. run against yeah. the Docker so, deployment so, as well yeah. as our regular yeah. deployment. So. Yeah. yeah, I had a question. So eventually this kind of mon monitoring system and uh, automatic deployment is gonna be like something that's gonna go into production, right? Yeah. And uh, I was wondering, like, let's say I have a company and I have a lot of uh, cloud license and someone else has a cloud license I launch a job, he launches a job, you create new containers. Uh, are those containers like my container and his container will be on the same machine or necessary on different machines since, uh, uh, I don't know, like how portable it, it, Yeah, yeah, they, they could be on different machines or they could be on the same machine. It's sort of like when you launch a virtual machine with Amazon, yeah. you, you don't know who else is on the physical box. And so that would, yeah. be, the, that would be the idea is we can, um, we'd be able to spin machines up and dynamically allocate a container to a specific machine so we can more effectively utilize the underlying hardware. But yeah. I was more like, uh, would there be a kind of security constraints of using the, 
using the same machine as someone else that has maybe private data or something like that? Yeah, th there shouldn't be. Um, I mean, these are great questions, and we haven't, you know. Okay. Uh, we, we, yeah, we know. No, these are fantastic, and these are what we're going to have to deal <laughs> with because, for sure, if you have a container connected to your core, you want to make sure that. That no you know, else, yeah, you don't want anybody else, and so that can for sure the engine would have to be restarted. We would never have an engine and switch it, switch cores without it. But that, but they're good, they're they're great questions. Yeah. But, yeah. but Docker basically helps with this immensely, right? Yeah. Because even if you have these two engine containers running on the same machine, they're completely isolated from each other, and they don't even know the other one's there. Yeah. And we can also even finally control what resources each engine gets, so we, you yeah. don't have one engine taking over the whole machine. Yeah. We can say you know this gets always gets this many cores and this, so. So yeah, it, it, it helps yeah. a lot with that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think we're out of time, aren't we? Yeah, okay. So thank you, um, we're both around um, all week. We're gonna do this again on Friday. We'll talk a little bit about this on, well, twice on Friday. Mm -hmm. Once during the plenary and then once um, in the talk, so thanks.